Lord be with you, and welcome to our service for the fifth Sunday of Lent for Trinity Lutheran Church. So this is for March 28th and 29th. Uh, just a, a couple of announcements before we can begin. We do have our newsletter that is going out. Uh, so many of you have already received it in email. Look at that up on the website and on our Facebook page. Uh, please stay tuned to our Facebook page and also our website. Uh, we'll be having announcements. As you know, uh, this uh, the restrictions that the government put in place end on April 1st, uh, which is this week. Uh, and we're going to be making decisions as that day approaches when we find out what restrictions are after that. So whether we're able to worship the way we did before, with, uh, obviously with some extra measures for, for sanitation and such, uh, or whether we'll be having smaller groups or, or, or what have you. So we're, we're waiting to find out more information before we make our decision on that. But stay tuned to our website and our Facebook page. Our questions for the sermon today, number one, what is a Christian in name only? Number two, what is a true child of God? What is a true child of God? And number three, what does, what does, or how is Jesus able to pay for the sins of the whole world on the cross when he is only one man? How is he able to pay for the sins of the whole world? Uh, as we do in our church service, we're going to uh, do it now. You can turn to page 17 on your worship folder. Uh, you'll see this on our Facebook page and under the video posted here. It's a PDF of our service. You can follow along. If you don't have it, you can look it up in your uh, catechism. On page 17, we have our memory work from the small catechism. What is confession? Confession has two parts. First, that we confess our sins. And second, that we receive absolution, that is forgiveness from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God and heaven. What sins should we confess? Before God, we should be guilty of all sins, even those we are not aware of, as we do in the Lord's Prayer. But before the pastor, we should confess only those sins which we know and feel in our hearts, which are these. Consider your life and place according to the Ten Commandments. Are you a father, mother, son, daughter, husband, wife, and worker? Have you been disobedient, unfaithful, or lazy? Have you been hot-tempered, rude, or quarrelsome? Have you hurt someone by your words or deeds? Have you stolen, been negligent, wasted anything, or done any harm? Again, our service is, uh, is a, a PDF form that you can click on and read or download or print. Uh, it'll be in the description of this YouTube video. It is on our Facebook uh, page uh, for, for where this video is posted. It is also on the front page of our website, trainingdlutherantelmoral.com.
received the song in unison, full verse by full verse. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against the ungodly people. From the deceitful and unjust man deliver me, for you are the God in whom I take refuge. Send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me into your holy hill and to your dwelling. Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. And I will praise you with the lyre, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Vindicate me, O God, and defend my cause against the ungodly people. For from the deceitful and unjust man deliver me, for you are the God in whom I take refuge. We now sing our hymn of the day, Christ the Light.
to Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. He said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there for an offering on one of the mountains on which I tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose, and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there, and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the, word, took the wood of the burnt offering, and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire of the knife. So they went both of them together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. He said, Behold, the fire, the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb. For a burnt offering, my son. So they went both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the boy, or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mouth of the Lord it shall be provided. This is the word, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from Hebrews chapter 9. But when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the rare and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is not of his creation, he entered once for all into the holy place, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Therefore he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promise eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. This is, O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Gospel lesson is from Galatians, or it's from John, chapter 8, verses 46 to 49. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. Then the Jews answered Jesus, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. Did 
I do not seek my own glory. Verse 26 says, He is the judge. I tell you, truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have made Abraham die as did the prophets. Yet you say, If anyone keeps my word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham, who died? And the prophets died. Who do you make yourself out to be? Jesus answered, I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me, and whom you say it is our God. Do you have not known him? I know him. If I were to say that I did not know him, I would be a liar like you, but I do know him. And I do the work. Lord Father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. So the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, yet have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. O Lord, I understand that. Thanks be to God. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. Israel, 
God's chosen people. And yet these Jews are Jews in name only. Now how can that be? Well, it's because not everyone who has Jewish blood is a child of Abraham and a son of God, but rather those who believe the words of God are the true children of God and members of the house of Israel. As St. Paul, another Jew, wrote in Romans chapter 9. For not all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel, and not all are children of Abraham because they are his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be made. And again, this Jewish apostle wrote to the Galatians in chapter 3. Know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. These Jews who opposed Jesus were probably Jews. They call themselves sons of Abraham, even sons of God. They thought they were children of Abraham, and that God was their father because they were born to Jewish parents. Yet as Jesus pointed out, they did not do the works of Abraham or listen to God's word. Whoever is of God hears the words of God, Jesus says, because they did not listen to Jesus' words. Jesus rightly concluded that these Jews were Jews in name only, and were rightly called children of the devil, as Jesus says in John chapter 8, verse 44. Now, by contrast, they accuse Jesus of being a Samaritan, which means that he is a non-Jewish foreigner who has a demon. And Jesus claims rather to be the Son of God. They claim to be the true children of Abraham, with God as their father. Yet Jesus accuses them of being children of the devil, who do his will. But Jesus says it's true. What these Jews in the only say is false. Jesus is the true son of God, the promised seed of Abraham, who is a blessing to all peoples. These Jews who reject Jesus' word are children of the devil, like the rest of mankind who reject God's word. Children of God are not born according to the flesh. Children of God are born only according to the Spirit. It does not matter who your parents are. It does not matter what nation you belong to, what color of skin you have, what language you speak. Not even your membership at a local congregation determines whether you are a child of God. You are only a child of God when you hear and believe the words of God. Jesus says early in this chapter, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciple. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you do not abide in Jesus' word, then you are not of God. There is no neutral ground. You are either of God or you are the devil. All mankind is born bound to Satan. We are children of wrath. That is why we baptize babies. If you are not with God, you are against God. If you are not a child of God, then you are a slave of Satan. This isn't just rhetoric. This is reality. Those who do not believe the words of God work against God. They deny the divinity of Christ. They deny his power to give eternal life to whomever believes in him. They reject the command to repent of sins and trust in God's mercy. So it is important that we examine ourselves and ask, am I a Christian? These Jews were children of Abraham only in name, but not in reality. They did not listen to the God of Abraham, the God Abraham trusted. 
Otherwise, they would have recognized that Jesus was the promised Christ. And many are Christians in name. They call themselves Christians. They call God their Father. But they do not hear the words of God. And they do not abide in the words of Christ. Now, this certainly is an indictment against Christians who neglect hearing and learning God's word. There is a commonly repeated phrase that's caused much harm to the souls of many Christians. It says, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Now, at a very, very shallow level, that statement is true. Many of Satan's lies have a smattering of truth. You don't have to go to a church building and worship God there in order to be a Christian. Well, look at us. Are we taking a break from being Christians because we're kept from gathering at the church building? Well, certainly not. We still trust in our Savior Jesus and gladly hear and learn His word as we are able. Likewise, our homebound members and those in the hospital and those deployed overseas or otherwise unable to physically go to the church building are still Christians as long as they have faith in Christ and gladly hear his words. But the statement, you don't need to go to church to be a Christian, is not meant to say that you don't need to go to a church building to be a Christian. No one believes that you do anyway. Rather, the statement is used to excuse not hearing and learning God's word. Yet Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them, they follow me. I give them eternal life, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. What else is the church other than Jesus' sheep? And what else does it mean to gather as the church other than gathering around the voice of Christ? If we refuse to hear his voice, we are not. Let this be a warning to all who refuse to hear God's preaching and word. That is not how Christians behave. If you find yourself behaving this way, repent and believe in the gospel that gives eternal life. Yet it is not only those who refuse to hear the word of God preached who are Christians in name. These Jews who opposed Jesus, in fact, did listen to a lot of preaching. But they rejected the true preaching and listened to laws. There are many churches that claim to be Christian, but they reject the teachings of Christ. Many say that it doesn't matter what a church teaches, all well, that matters is that you love Jesus. Well, that's just not true. It matters what the church teaches, because it matters what Jesus teaches. If, if you say you love Jesus, but you don't believe that he is true God and man, the only begotten of the Father who died on the cross for your sins, but you say you love Jesus, well, you believe in a different Jesus. And so we should listen to all of the teachings of Jesus. Jesus preached repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Yet many churches with the name Christian refuse to teach that people should repent of their sins. Like dogs that refuse to bark when a burglar breaks in at night. So these preachers refuse to warn people of the danger of their sins, as Jesus Christ commanded them to do. Many churches with the name Christian deny that Jesus is the only way to and in saying this, they say that Jesus is equal to Satan. No, we must not just call ourselves Christians. We must do as Christians do. We must hear the words of Christ, abide in his word, and do the works of God. This means that we should also mark and avoid those churches and preachers that claim to be Christian, while they reject the teachings of, Je of Christ Jesus of the Bible. And what does Jesus teach? 
From this gospel lesson alone, Jesus teaches us the way to everlasting life. It is such a rich gospel lesson. These Jews denied a God who could give eternal life. They confessed Abraham to be dead and the prophets to be dead. But Jesus preaches a God of the living, not of the dead. He preaches the God who gives eternal life to all who believe in Christ. Jesus said that Abraham rejoiced to see his day. He saw it and was glad. Well, how could Abraham, who lived 2,000 years before Jesus, have seen Jesus, who was just 30 years old at the time? Because Jesus is Christ, the Son of God. God promised to send the Christ to Abraham's lineage. Abraham believed this promise by faith. Abraham saw Jesus through faith. When he, according to God's word, attempted to sacrifice his only son Isaac, whom he loved. Yet Christ stopped Abraham, the angel of the Lord. That was Christ. Christ stopped Abraham and instead provided a ram to be sacrificed. And so Abraham confessed that God would provide. God would provide a sacrifice that would make atonement for all our sins. God did not require Abraham to sacrifice his only son, who he loved. Rather, God sacrificed his only son, who he loved. God provided. Jesus Christ is the appointed sacrifice of sins. His blood makes satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. How can this be? How can one man's death make satisfaction for the sins of the whole world? Again, Jesus tells us, before Abraham was, I am. Not before Abraham was, I was. He's not just saying that he is older than Abraham, like the Jehovah Witnesses who believe that Jesus was the angel Michael, who was the first created. No. God, Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. God told Moses at the burning bush that his name was, I am. So the people of God called him Yahweh, which is translated, he is. He is. He always is. He has no beginning and no end. Jesus says, I am. Jesus is God. He is before Abraham. He is now. And he is forever. The sacrifice of Jesus on the cross is the sacrifice of the eternal Son of God on the cross. His death fully pays for all our sins. If you believe Jesus is God, then believe that your sins are forgiven. The Jews scoffed that Jesus could give eternal life. You'd have to be eternal to do that. Well, Jesus is eternal. If they listened to him, they would believe his word and, and see that it accords fully with the Holy Scriptures, and then they would know it. During this global pandemic, we hear a lot about how it's important that we listen to the experts, especially the scientists and healthcare professionals. And of course, this makes sense. They know more about this disease than we do. And since this virus can potentially kill many people, and has already killed thousands worldwide, it is wise for us to listen to those who have the greater knowledge about the situation. This is a matter of life and death. We need to be careful that we don't just listen to people spouting off their own opinions when they really don't know what they're talking about. Your faith in Christ, likewise, is a matter of life and death, except of a much greater magnitude. We're talking of eternal life and eternal damnation. If you shouldn't just listen to any old Joe's opinion, matters concerning the coronavirus, then you certainly shouldn't just follow any old Joe's opinion 
of sin, righteousness, faith, and salvation. You should listen to Jesus. When someone spots off his opinion about something not being a sin, or not being important to your faith, or something that you should believe or should not believe, you should ask where in the Bible it says that. Jesus says that in the scriptures we have eternal life because it is the scriptures that bear witness about him. That is why we hold the Bible so dear. And that is why we expect our pastors to teach us from the Bible, not their own opinions or according to the desires of its shame ears. This is abundantly important because the experts with this coronavirus don't know everything. And as information is gathered, they're even changing what they think. And even some experts disagree with other experts. But Jesus is united in his teaching in Scripture. And in Scripture, we have the truth salvation. When we listen to those who dismiss what the Bible teaches, we're not following Jesus. Rather, we follow our own sinful desires, and we do the will of the devil. That is a deadly path that leads to being a Christian in the name of the but not to hell. Yet when we listen to Jesus, what do we learn? Yes, we learn that we need to repent of our sins. We learn to be humble before God and before others. But we also learn of the only God who saves. We learn that God provides his very own son to be the sacrifice for all our sins. We learn that his blood forgives us and gives us eternity. We learn that this God who provides us with eternal life also provides for our daily needs as often as we ask Him. When we listen and cherish the words of Christ, we learn that we are God's children. And we will learn that as God's children who keep His words, we will never see the hell. In Jesus' name, amen. Please rise. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We continue with the canticle in your worship folder, page 11, the Benedictus.
to be forgiven those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer.
please uh, continue to read the announcements that are in your worship folder, uh, including one that uh, concerns giving, uh, and also uh, stay tuned for our newsletter, uh, which will 